WrestleMania, there's been WrestleZania. It does feel like this is uh, this is the American Nightmares WrestleMania. Yeah. Cody, I was born in uh, 1987. Okay, I grew up in the Attitude Era, and boy, did I love everything about it. Oh yeah. Triple H and Shawn Michaels were coming out and saying, "We got two words for you." And then you had a bald-headed Texas rattlesnake that would come out and say, give me a hell yeah. Right. And then there was a man who would walk out in front of millions of his own fans and cut promos that were better than anything I'd ever heard in my entire life on a microphone. There's a lot of us from that era For those that don't know, Cody and The Rock have exchanged slaps and a mouth to each other, but I will say this, and also oh. you've gotten whipped with a belt and thrown off your own bus, which I can't wait to ask about in a second, but there was a lot of us from the Attitude Era that heard The Rock was coming back, and we heard The Rock was taking on the greatest of all time, Roman Reigns, in the main event of WrestleMania, and we got jacked up. Oh. We got zeked up. But I think what everybody says in every arena that we travel to is, Cody Rhodes has earned this main event against Roman Reigns. Amen. And if it was not Cody Rhodes, it would be absolute bullshit. Cody, from your standpoint, has this all gone the best way possible, worst way possible, or how do you think you would describe this road to this main event back-to-back -back nights to WrestleMania from your perspective? The road to WrestleMania for Oh, the me. roads to WrestleMania. Uh, That's what uh, it is. The there roads. it is. We just so, found it. I'm, I'm coming in a little bit hot, and, and, and here's why. The roads to WrestleMania, it's been tumultuous. Everybody's seen the matches that I've had. Going back to back, winning the Royal Rumble once again. Thank you for that stat, Pat. No it problem. was all gearing towards getting back. And me and Mr. Cole here talked all about it. We want to get back. Last year, Roman Reigns screwed me out of the biggest moment of my life. Getting to WrestleMania 40. Yeah, right? Indeed. But here's where I'm coming in hot. This is, this is where my mindset is. Just a, a little news for everyone who, who didn't hear already. Last night, Michael knows this, 1 a.m., laying in bed. It's the first time I'm going to get a little sleep before we get into this big, big, big event that is WrestleMania. All of a sudden, loud bang at the side of my bus. Thought it was a gunshot. Terrified. <laughs> Clammed up. Next thing I know, my bus driver yells, we got to get off this bus. It's on fire. What? 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 So, so my bus, it didn't burn to a crisp, but it was up in a big fireball for a moment. And the reason I share this story is I'm here this morning, non-flinching, and I grabbed two things off my bus when I thought, this is it. This is the end. I grabbed two things. I grabbed a picture of my daughter and a picture of my wife, and then I grabbed my WrestleMania boots. There ain't nobody here who is more ready for WrestleMania than me. Hey, well, did everything else burn? Like, are we going to see the pants uh, and the jacket and everything? Here's the, here's the only thing. The suits that I wear will all be... Uh, You'll, you'll know. There's a smell off of them. Okay. There's, there's a smell. We, we got a lot of stuff out of there, and it, it all worked out. Thankful, by the way, we got anybody from the Philadelphia Fire Department here yeah, today. Thank you, yeah. Philly FD. Thank yeah. you, guys. Much love. Hey, that's a true story, though. For shoot right there. It happened last night. It happened last night, and I was thinking I was coming on here hot already because this show, again, we've discussed it, seems a little... Oh, biased. Oh, biased. So biased. Sorry. So, look, now look at this. But finally, finally you're going to get a level playing field today on this show. Michael Cole, how pumped are you? That's 
why we didn't want him to hear any of the show. That's yeah. why we didn't want him to hear any of the show. We kept the speakers down. But Cole, I know you've known Cody for a long, long time. Oh. But you've been openly on the mic on Raw, just completely biased against the yeah. bloodline yeah. in favor of Cody. And why is that? And why do you think there is such a disagreement potentially, Cole, on like, we want Rocky versus the hashtag, we want Cody, which trended for like 72 hours immediately upon the news. Well, first off, I, when I got a text message at 2.40 a.m. this morning that he had a fire in his bus, I was a bit concerned, but. Happy you're okay, yeah. Cody. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, That's scary, you're sitting duck there. It was a scary moment. Was but. that the universe telling you maybe, hey, let's get out of this weekend. Let's not dance with the bloodline. Ooh. Let's not stare the final boss down. I, let's not go into a Sunday I with think, bloodline rules. I think it's the opposite. I think the universe was saying, hey, we're going to set your bus on fire and you're still going to go in and wipe the floor with the bloodline on Saturday. One of the first internet shows um, at WWE called the <laughs> JBL and Cole Show. Yeah. Uh, Cody was a big contributor to that. Um, and that was a really rough time in his career. He was playing this character known as Stardust. He didn't know whether he was coming or going. He never knew if he was going to make it in this business. He never knew if he was going to make his dad uh, the American dream. Wow. Still got it. Proud. That was bullshit. I didn't like that. I didn't like that what's going on. <laughs> Had to do that. <laughs> Cody went away, uh, created a, an unbelievable opportunity for himself. Um, forced his way back into this company That's where right. we had to have him went out one back-to-back -back royal rumbles uh and then the rock it's not easy no what does the rock do the business gets hot again rock decides he wants to be a part of it whoa oh. he pushes his way in through the this door oh. he decides to take the spot of my man cody rhodes in the main event at wrestlemania because that is nonsense because That's not he true. is That's on true. the board that he is the final boss he is. that he is allowed to do this cody rhodes heard all of these people that were chanting we want cody Cody Rhodes decided in Las Vegas, and Pat, you and I were there. Yeah. Cody Rhodes walked out on stage and said, uh-uh, this ain't happening. I won the Royal Rumble. Damn it, I'm taking my spot at WrestleMania. Jeez. What a mark. Some lies in there. Chills there. There were no lies in there, by the way. Wow. Well, I'm not. We want Cody. We want Cody. Guys, uh, for those saying uh, we want Cody, uh, as silly as it sounds, it's so nice to hear it because I have wanted you guys my entire career, and this is the right time to do it. So thank you guys very much. Yeah. And by the way, this is a fact. The last time Roman Reigns had a match was at the Royal Rumble on the last Saturday of January. My man next to me, Cody Rhodes, wrestles every single week, not only on Monday Night Raw, but at live events around this country. So I cannot think of a better person to represent where WWE is going today than Cody Rhodes. Okay, Michael Cole, I understand we're on the campaign trail right now. Obviously, you're called a politician, which I think is bullshit because you're a hardworking guy. Am I a politician? Because that's what was said about me. Guess who's on Fox News this morning talking politics? Who? Oh. Who? Oh. Oh, I didn't see it. Your boy, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. News. I, I've oh, heard him talk I talk politics before. You know yeah. what? If if Rock wants to run for office just to piss him off. Hey, I don't know. If if Rock if Rock wants to run for office seriously though, just to make him angry, maybe I'll run for office too. You know. Ooh. I think that'd be sweet. I don't know the platform. Yet. Connor's got a question for you, Cody. Yeah, Cole kind of just laid out the, you know, the career arc that you had. And not so recently, you were doing, like, house shows, you know? And you, and you mentioned, too, like, you know, you were hoping for, I, you know what? I don't care. You see this guy in the Jets jersey? That guy's been a loser his whole entire life.
American Nightmare Scrooge. flag. No offense, nothing against you. And he's got American Nightmare flag, so you just know he's a loser. There's nothing no wrong offense, with no that. Offense. There's nothing wrong with that. No offense, no offense, no offense. No offense. No offense. No offense. No offense. It, to, to that point of the mark with the flag. I mean, are they mad because I get it? Are they mad because I know? Are they no mad? Offense. No, no offense. No offense. But no offense. to that point about, you know, going through that grind, when you w were doing those house shows and gyms and, you know, there wasn't the whoa of the entire arena that we see every single week, was this exactly what you envisioned? Like, did, did you know, like, hey, this is where Our it character. is? Yeah. Like, you knew that you had it in that moment? Or was it more so like, hey, I just got to keep putting in that work and it will pay off? I really, truly didn't have an end game. I really didn't know where it was going to go. The main thing I wanted to do was interact. Sometimes more important than the match on an independent show is the meet and greet you do before, is the pictures in the ring after. That was the first time, because I grew up in WWE. Yeah. That was the first time that it wasn't, you know, the house lights weren't down and a spotlight on the ring. You could see every single person. And when I could see every single person, and I wrestled every independent I could possibly think of in the US and the world over, when you can see them, you can make a connection with them. And that had been the thing missing. I grew up with all this great lineage and history and experience that my dad tried to give me and all that. But really, unless you cross over and connect with them, it doesn't go anywhere. It's something that I agree on with The Rock. The Rock connects with his audience. He makes a point to it. He shows you how he feels about it. And in that respect, we are we are similar uh, up to that point. Yeah, I just, just yeah, I didn't you, know. Yeah, go ahead, Cole. And, and Cody, you mentioned your lineage, and uh, you know we may have a new audience watching here uh, today. Oh, that was very professional of you. Wow. Oh, that's Syracuse. Guy, They're asking him to teach classes at Syracuse again. Yeah. <laughs> Been 27 years. But when you talk about the lineage, and of course your father, the, the, the late, great American dream, Dusty Rhodes, Your brother, of course, Dustin. Yeah. Um, what they've never done is what you're attempting to do Sunday. With everything that Dusty accomplished in his unbelievable career, he never held the WWE Championship. Mm. And, and this is what you're trying to accomplish on Sunday night. If that happens. This is your I'm, story. And, and, and I'm, sure, I'm sure you've run this through your mind over the past You gotta year. finish your story. When you, when, please. If you finish the story, what's that going to feel like? Is it going to be this huge, like, relief, like this weight is finally off your shoulders? Like, what? It, what do you think is? The... We boozing? What? Well, <laughs> <laughs> having a little Wheatley vodka. Or what? what? There is the the Wheatley bus. We can get some back. Well, it's on fire, but it's, all, it's okay. The the vodka survived. Uh, to, <laughs> <laughs> to, to, it's moonshine now. To answer your, your question, uh, Michael, I can't really predict what something like that would feel like because of what she said. I've never been to the end zone. You know, there's that statement, you know, when you enter any sports entertainment, hey, act like you've been there before. I haven't. And that's the whole point of getting there and getting it done because I want to know for the first time what that feels like. I want them to know for the first time what that feels like. Them to know. And the, sto the story about Dusty Rhodes in 1978 and holding that title, I have that title with me. Holding that title and then it being taken away because of how he won the match, that's all very much what we talk about when we talk about finishing the story. But the story that begins, if I am able to be the greatest champion that WWE has seen yep. in decades. Our For tribal sure. chief, our tribal chief is who he's talking Ever, about. Ever, probably. That's who he's talking about. The, sto the story that begins then is, is something that I would look forward to so, so much because it's no secret. I mean, we should know because we're on ESPN right now on one of the most successful shows with ESPN's golden boy, Pat McAfee, whoa, right whoa, here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> uh, but we, we should know wrestling, and you guys should take credit for this. Wrestling truly has never been this cool, ever. Amen. We acknowledge. So, in, so instead... Instead of it ending, right, instead of the story being finished, I say each and every one of us, fan, performer, competitor, analyst, commentator, we start a whole new damn story Monday night after WrestleMania, after I beat Roman Reigns and become the undisputed WWE Champion. The Raw after Mania is certainly one that the world anticipates every single year because it's starting the whole new season that is 52 weeks a year 
And this man has showed up for all of them. Amen. And that's why these people love him.